how much longer? <laughs> On my way to Valle de los Tirios. And I'm already getting the real desert experience. For one, I'm alone, completely alone. And yeah, there's already many different kinds of cactus. Cacti? I never know the plural for cactus. But this is supposed to get only better. Turns out it was only gonna get worse. I mean, the scenery was beautiful, you'll see it, but a series of unfortunate events made it really, really, really hard. Let's start at the beginning. This was supposed to be a 100 and something kilometer long ride where I would not see any towns or any opportunities for refill. So I had to pack all my food, all my water, and I thought I was ready, but I did not take into account that things could go wrong. So today the plan is ride all the way up and sleep somewhere and then tomorrow wake up and ride through the Valle de los Tirios. The terrain is okay-ish so far um, if you compare it to other sections but let's see. It is all uphill today. The first thing that got worse was the terrain. It was rocky, it was sandy, and it was uphill all the time. And with my bike being as heavy as it is and my tires being a bit narrow for this route, I had to push my bike quite a lot, which meant I was slower than expected. As if today wasn't hard enough, there's a weird sound in the front wheel. The thing is, the way I know how to fix it is not fixing it. It's kind of making another no noise. So let me see if I can show it here. Yeah. So now this thing that I usually use to kind of calibrate how much space I want to leave between the brake and the pad is touching the spokes because it's too far out. Okay, although it is in my nature to just not think about it whenever something's bothering me or something's wrong, I cannot, I cannot avoid this anymore. So let's try to fix it. Try. This was my second attempt at trying to fix whatever was wrong with the front brake. The issue was it was making a weird noise, but most importantly, the brake was not working. So whenever I would use the front brake, my bike would not stop. I don't think I fixed it. I knew I was short on time and I didn't want to spend all my daylight hours working on trying to fix something. So I kept going until it got dangerous. I started falling because I didn't have a front brake, so I stopped again for a third time and spent maybe two hours trying to understand what was wrong. The last time I had seen that one of the brake pads had fallen, so I had put a new one. And when I checked this time, again, one of the brake pads had fallen and here I am trying to put a new one again and trying to do it better because why would it fall? I thought. I had fixed it, so I continued and I tried to pedal as much as possible because I knew I was a little bit behind. Also, while trying to fix my bike in the burning sun, I had spent too much of my water. There's never really any like bad, bad footage. Um, I mean, there's some footage of me pushing the bike, which I do a lot, but I am now so frustrated and tired and I mean these kind of feelings only last like I would say five minutes because I feel better now already but I swear to you five minutes ago it was 
absolute despair. I know I'm in the middle of nowhere. No one's gonna come and save me. I cannot really fix the problem that, I mean, I think it's a minor problem in the bike, but it's hot. Um, there's no connection. There is no one. And I still have a lot to go and a lot to push. So, yeah. I guess now I do have footage of a bad moment yes. today. And I mean, it's not a bad day overall. It's a bad moment and it will get better. I'm already on my bike. Look at me. I'm not pushing anymore. I'm cycling. Ah. Yeah. Back to back to pushing. Okay. Need to get out of my head. I've got enough, enough everything. It will just take longer. And that's frustrating, but it is what it is. I chose this, so no point in making it worse by constantly saying how bad it is. Whew. Let's go. Sometimes it's hard for me to even push. Like, I'm not even strong enough in my arms. Water. I'll see there's so many bugs tomorrow I'll see El Valle de los Tirios I wanted to get there tonight but this is good enough this is really nice Frijoles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hmm. New day, new struggle. It's 7:30. The sun is already burning, and the terrain is still sucking. <laughs> okay, I have I think like 65 kilometers until my next like refill so that's a restaurant in the highway so 65 kilometers until the highway but today is supposed to be beautiful and i hope that the rain gets better i'm sweating so much is she dead is she alive why is she not moving ah. okay i really i know i can i have to I have to do it <laughs> but I have at least like five hours ahead of me in this <laughs> and it's so hot <laughs> this crying and groaning goes on for a while and it actually gets worse 
I mean, I cried, cried, like ugly cried and screamed and shouted at the void. But I don't think we need that on the internet, so I'm just gonna mute it. But the worst thing was realizing I did not have enough water for the rest of the day. I kept two gulps of water just until the end of the day. That meant I would just have to ride without drinking under the burning sun. Oh yeah, and let's not forget my front brake wasn't working. That meant that I would fall every 20 minutes. You can imagine how humiliating that is when you're so thirsty, so hot. You know there's so much to do still before getting to the highway and you just keep falling over and over again. And don't get me wrong, it was definitely one of the most magical sceneries I had ever seen. And I'll share all the footage about how beautiful it was in another video. But I really wanted to do this one, just being really honest with how part of the journey are also really, really tough. I know this looks terrible, but I'm really, really thirsty. I have like this much water, like 40 kilometers to go. So I guess chickpea water. At this point, the lack of water had become my biggest problem. I was really thirsty and knowing I had no water left made me feel even worse. Being so thirsty, I couldn't really eat much, so I also was lacking some energy. It's still water, right? Oh. Feels good. So my phone died because of the heat and I'm about to die as well. So we're gonna wait here in the shade until, well, at least until my phone is back. I am, I am so done with today and it's really not over. 27 kilometers to go. Keep going. 25. Keep going. When I finally made it to the highway, I started hitchhiking. There weren't many cars going past, so the first one who said, I'll give you a ride, I jumped in. I think I had a heat stroke and I was definitely dehydrated. So when he said, let me take you to the same place I'm going, San Felipe, I'm sure they can fix your bike in the bike shop over there. I did not think twice. I don't even think I checked the map. I was just in for the ride, happy to get my bike fixed and just happy to be in a car with water. The problem is San Felipe is way, way up north. So I was going in the opposite direction. I had made it out of the desert, so I was happy. I got myself a cheap hotel room and I just crashed for the night. The next day I went to the bike shop, but the owner told me he could not fix what was wrong with my bike. Apparently the issue was that the brake pads are held in place using a magnet that apparently had fallen from my caliper. So that's why even though I kept changing the brake pads, they kept falling because the magnet was just not there anymore. I spent two days in San Felipe calling all bike shops in the peninsula and trying to see how I could find a new caliper for my bike. I've been chatting and calling and texting four different like bike shops around the peninsula. Um, none of them have what I need. Uh, but I just feel like I cannot just stay here. I, I kind of need to move. So I'm gonna go to one of the bike shops that has some of what I need and try to see if we can fix the rest. And then otherwise, then we'll just fix that little part and I'll just go to the next one. The other thing is, I'm very up north right now. So that means I have to hitchhike like five or six hours. 
I'm always nervous before hitchhiking and such a long distance because I know it's gonna be a lot of time of me just like waiting and people being like, no, I'm just going down the road or I'm just going halfway. So it's gonna be a long day. I really dread them. And then they're not that bad, but to be honest, I really always get very nervous before doing it. I feel bad about asking and then it's just a lot of waiting and a lot of, re I mean, it's constant rejection. You're just like this and people just pass you by. So, well, I mean, I cannot ride my bike, so it is it is what it is. I try to change my mindset. It's gonna be an adventure. I'm gonna meet new people. Who knows where I'll end tonight because maybe I won't make it all the way. So maybe I'll have to sleep somewhere um, in between. Um, yeah, it's gonna be an adventure. So for spot two, 50 kilometers in, the good thing is that these bands make people slow down so they see me more. The bad thing is there's really not many cars coming. Game of patience. It's just crazy to think, where, where will I be tonight? I don't know. I really don't know. Will I stay here? Will I get a ride all the way to where I want to be? Will, will I get a ride to halfway there? I really cannot know. And for my third ride of the day. Okay, it's 3 p.m. And to be honest, if I have to stay here, like if in two hours I haven't had like I haven't gotten a ride. I can just camp here and it's beautiful. So there's worse places and there's like a market and I'm sure like over there I can find a place to camp and even swim. So yeah, there's worse places in where to get stranded. So one hour left, well, I had said that I would stop hitchhiking at five because I still have many kilometers to go and I really don't want to get there or be left in the middle of nowhere um, when it's dark. Okay, it's 4 p.m. now. I might even just stop for the day. It's beautiful here. Okay, there's been no cars. Um, I'm just gonna go find a place to sleep tonight and deal with this tomorrow. Of course, there had to be deep sand before getting to a camp. This is exactly what I mean when I say um, it will pass. An hour ago, I was really thinking I was gonna lose it um, but I just kept it in mind and now I just had a beautiful swim in El Mar de Cortes I am in this remote beach there's literally like a couple RVs over there uh, I think there are some fishermen I see a fisherman over there and there's like two shacks but there's no one there's literally no one um, I'm reading my book and having my first beer in Mexico Tecate um, I rarely drink when I travel, but I decided that today was a good day um, to have it here. I have my tent up there. I'm gonna see a beautiful sunrise, I think, tomorrow morning. And yeah, I'll wake up super early and I will have all day to get a ride or several rides to where I need to get to get my spare part. I think I can make it. I mean, it's very remote which makes it super beautiful, but also hard to hitchhike. Um, but a full day should get me there. But I'm, I'm happy, I'm so happy. I, this is so unexpected. I am somewhere where I would have never thought I would be having a beer in. It's completely off the route I had planned, 
and it's not like a well-known I think I don't think it is no it's not a well-known destination here in Baja either and it's still so beautiful so undiscovered it feels very much like an adventure and I feel like nowadays we have everything in our maps and we know exactly where we're going it feels good to just be here <laughs> yeah I mean, at some point, I, I mean, I still need to get my 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 bike fixed, uh, and I hope that's gonna be tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday, though, so I don't know how that's gonna work. But if I worry about it, I mean, this is still going to be my reality right now. By worrying about it, I just make it worse. Um, so I try to stay focused and do everything I can do to fix it, but not overwhelm myself with ah this is not what I planned I'm gonna miss some parts or I'm gonna be late for this other part there's nothing I can do I'm doing everything I can to get this fixed and if that involves having a little beer here in a remote beach that I don't know how it's called in Baja California that's it too so yeah Back where we were, I have such a sleepy face. I don't know if anyone's gonna give me a ride. But I have a full day ahead of me and 306 kilometers to go. It's been two hours and we're still here. I tried to speak to some truck drivers. Oh, there's two. Try to speak to one of the two truck drivers. We're just literally unapologetically approach people and ask them, which goes against my whole personality. I guess it's time to get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Okay, talking to the truck drivers was successful. I've made it 50 kilometers further. Um, to this place. Once again, approaching truck drivers was the best solution. This one got me all the way to Vizcaino. And not only that, we really had an amazing conversation all the way to Vizcaino, which was almost four hours. So yeah, it took me two days that I made it. I made it to Vizcaino. And I made it to the bike shop and they were able to fix it. I was so happy they were the nicest. So I'm now ready to continue. I hope you've enjoyed this roller coaster of a vlog. I've literally gone through every emotion in the last few days. But it's all part of the trip, it's all part of the journey. Let's see what's next. <laughs>